So let me begin this story back in university. I started university thinking that I knew exactly what I wanted to study and what kind of job I needed to get afterward. Um, in university, I majored in Arabic, basically. Asian and Middle Eastern Literature and Languages was the official title. And I chose Arabic because I thought it would make me seem interesting. I also chose as my second major economics because I knew that I needed to find a job afterwards. And I found myself in a position where I had chosen this path for myself without really knowing what it was. And I think a lot of us, a lot of adults are, are in that position where we're sort of stuck because of a choice that we made when we were teenagers. So in university already, there were a lot of warning signs that economics was not the right choice for me. Um, I dropped out of my introduction to economics course. I was always falling asleep in the most important classes. And I went from being at the top of the class in high school to barely holding on to average in university. But despite how badly things were going, I made a lot of excuses. The economics department at my school was indeed one of the hardest. Um, the university that I was attending was known to be academically rigorous, um, and I knew that I was competing with the best of the best, so I continued onwards. So I managed to get a job working in commodities trading, uh, working for a large company, and in my first year of working, after graduation, I was able to travel to uh, tons of countries, like over 10. Um, and on Facebook, my life looked pretty great. Uh, because of all of my traveling, and of course I would take lots of photos, my life looked really exciting, and I felt like I was winning the post-graduation competition. Uh, but I was harboring a really big secret that was not apparent on Facebook. Despite all of my travel, I really just spent my time hating my job and waiting for the weekend. Um, I also just wasn't doing well professionally. Like, I had no interest in the work. I was falling asleep in meetings. Um, I was late all the time. I did not care for what I was doing. Um, and so I kept thinking, like, there has to be something better. And it was around this time that I was seeing a lot of exciting things happening in tech. Airbnb was becoming this household name. Uber was expanding internationally. There were just so many new services being offered online every day, it felt like. And I had a lot of ideas too, so I thought maybe I should try this out. Um, so I decided that I would try to start my own company. And the way that I would do it was I would learn how to code, I would build an app, um, I would make lots of money from that app and be able to quit my job, and then hopefully I would be able to be happy. So, step one was learn how to code. And so in my mind, learning how to code meant that I would be going to events, meeting people, networking with other engineers, other entrepreneurs. Um, I would be doing all of these online courses, um, and I would be able to build a prototype. But how it actually went was a bit different from what I imagined. I would go to tech events and get really confused and end up just eating all the free food. Um, I always struggled to finish these different online coding programs. Um, and I was not learning how to code at all. I would still be daydreaming. I realized that I was a wantrepreneur. I was only talking about wanting to be an entrepreneur, but I, I never actually went out and did anything. And I was getting stuck at this first step in my big plan, right? Learn how to code. I felt like I had no time, no energy, um, and, and no focus uh, being able to learn how to code. And so that led me to thinking like, well, why am I getting stuck in this really what seems to be basic first step, right? Why am I getting stuck? And I realized that all of these complaints that I had of time and focus and energy, 
they came from my work. I was working really long hours. It was draining me mentally and emotionally because I hated my job. I didn't see any future for me there and I didn't have any interest in the industry. And these were just a constant for me if I stayed. The only thing keeping me at my job was paid travel, um, a stable income, and like the, the knowledge that I had a job, the like feeling of security that I had a job. Um, but thinking about you know my dreams of starting my own company, I realized that if I stayed at my job, I knew exactly what my future would be like. I would continue having a stable income, but I would hate my life. So I was getting stuck in step one of my big plan to find happiness. I had no time, no energy, and no focus. And the reason for that was because of my job. My job was draining me. Um, and I knew that if I stayed at my job, I knew exactly what my future would look like. It, I would continue to have long hours. Um, I would continue to be uninterested in the things that I was doing. Um, I would essentially just be stuck. So I knew that if I stayed, not only would I continue my status quo, but my dreams of finding a career that I was passionate about, that, I, that excited me, being able to start a company. I knew that if I stayed, I would never even give my dreams the ability to see the light of day, to give them a chance. And so I knew that if I needed, if I wanted some kind of change in my life, I needed to change something big about it. So, I knew that if I needed to make a big change, that first plan that I had, I had to do something even more. So I decided that my new plan was to quit my job and learn how to code, join a coding school, become a software engineer and get some experience in tech, and then try to start my company. And that's exactly what I did. I quit my job in August of 2014. It was one of the happiest days of my life. Um, I could not stop smiling. And when I stepped out of that building and when I woke up the next day, there was this amazing weight that was lifted off my shoulders. Um, and I was able to, for the first time, really focus on learning how to code. I quickly joined a coding school was able to become a software engineer by May of 2015. I started working at a startup in Silicon Valley. And throughout this process, I discovered more about myself that I didn't know about before. Uh, one of the big things was I found out that I really loved education. While working as a software engineer, I started helping other women who were making similar career changes to what I had done. One thing led to another, and I ended up starting a coding boot camp in the Middle East, um, helping out refugees and helping them find jobs in tech. Um, and after that, um, I actually got introduced uh, to um, my current co-founder by a mutual friend of ours. Uh, she put us together, and in January of 2017, um, we decided to start Code Chrysalis. So Code Chrysalis is a coding boot camp in Tokyo with the vision of changing the way Asia trains software engineers. Since we started four years ago, we've helped hundreds of people make career changes, um, helping them transition to another role or another industry. Um, and our graduates now work everywhere from large companies like Google, IBM, Mercari, and Indeed, to small startups in Japan and even around the world. A, in addition, a big part of what we do is also helping large companies make a transition as well. So we work with companies um, like NRI, Mercari, uh, and the NTTs, helping them re-engineer their teams. So going along with the theme of this year, when I think of an eclipse, I think about how this event that we look forward to so much was feared for a long time in a lot of different ancient cultures. 
For example, the ancient Greeks believed that the eclipse was a punishment, an abandonment by the gods. And in fact, the word eclipse comes from the Greek word meaning disappearance. Um, the Vikings believed that the eclipse was the result of when the wolves were trying to eat the sun or the moon. And the Aztecs believed that eclipses were a sign of the possibility of the end of the world. Now though, it seems silly to be scared of eclipses. Now that we understand the science behind them, there's something we look forward to. We have countdowns for them. We take, out our, we take time out of our day to go outside and watch them when it happens. And we celebrate them. And I see the natural eclipses of our lives in the same way. When we don't understand something, we can view it with paranoia and doubt. Um, and when, but when we look at it and we learn more about it, um, we realize it can be a chance uh, for change. For me, my eclipse was leaving a career that was not meant for me at all. And before I fully understood it, I was fearful and doubtful. But when I understood why it needed to happen, it became something in my life to celebrate. In about two months, it's actually going to be seven years since I quit my first job. And in the past seven years, the things in my life that, I've, that I'm proud of, the things that I've done, have been much more exciting, fulfilling, and magical than I could have ever imagined it would be. And so when you take time to step out of your comfort zone, that is where the magic happens. So when will the eclipses in your life happen? I hope that instead of fearing them, you can identify when they need to happen, understand them, and welcome them with open arms when it's time. My name is Yan Fan. I am the co-founder and CTO of Code Chrysalis. Thank you for watching.